Did you know that wearing your fur coat could actually be good for the environment? Hi, I'm Lisa Sim for WatchMojo.com and today we're going to be talking about how wearing fur could actually be green. What do you mean by saying fur is green? Well, some of the activist groups today are saying we don't need fur, we have all these great synthetics and we're certainly not against synthetics, but most synthetics are made from petrochemicals, they are non-renewable resources, there's pollution problems and so on. So, you know, fur really has a role to play. It's been around a long time, it's proven, it has a track record. Here we are, you know, 400 years after the commercial fur trade started in Canada. The biologists tell us that the beaver are as abundant as they were when Europeans first came. That's quite an environmental success story. What do you have to say to people who believe that fur is unethical? We shouldn't kill animals for frivolous purposes. And some activists say, oh, fur coat is a frivolous purpose. But we do have to wear something. We do wear clothing. We do wear winter clothing. Uh, when you think of fur as being a natural product, such a long-lasting product, that we can remodel it and restyle it, it can be passed down and worn vintage, you know, it's anything but frivolous. And we should remember the other side. It's not at all frivolous for the people who live on the land. You know, we have Cree hunters and trappers and members of our fur council. The, the Cree of James Bay in northern Quebec and Ontario, they eat beaver and muskrat. They hunt them for food. They don't have cows up there. When they've eaten the meat, should they throw the fur away? Or does it make sense? Is it respectful for us to use it? So that's not frivolous. The fur trade accounts for what percentage of animals that are killed every year? In North America, you have maybe 5 million mink produced a year. In wild fur, you have maybe 3, 4 million wild animals. Compare that to food animals. We have 800 million, almost a billion cows a year for food. We have three to four billion chickens a year. We have pigs and sheep and goats, turkeys, all these animals. We are talking about billions of animals. We added together, the fur trade itself represents maybe a quarter of 1% of the animals that are being used in society. But important is to realize that they're being used responsibly. Is the animal's welfare taken into consideration? Do they suffer? The Canadian government and the fur trade have you know, invested over $20 million in the last years to have the world's leading trap research program, which means devising new traps and testing them so that the animals die quickly and humanely. And that has led to the development of the Agreement on International Humane Trapping Standards. You started an initiative and a website called furisgreen.com. Can you tell us about that? There seems to be that people are ready to hear another side of the story. And although the trade, it's so artisanal, it's really a craft, a handicraft, a heritage industry. And that's why we haven't heard the other side. When you attack a big modern industry, they give it to some PR department and you'll hear the answer. The reason you haven't heard the other side of the first story before is because who is the fur trade? It's craftspeople, they're not communicators. It's trappers out in the bush, it's farmers, family farms. Everything around us does come from the land, does come from the earth, does come from people who got their hands dirty, you know, lumberjacks or miners or cattlemen. All these people that are being attacked by these protest campaigns are the people that feed us and clothe us. And there's something bizarre that we, we've had the privilege that the people on the land have done such a good job of becoming productive that most of us can live in the city and have nice clean fingernails and talk about stuff and call that working that what do we do with that freedom this amazing for the first time in human history we turn on the people on the land as if there was something wrong with them and I think that's something we have to change it's this bizarre cultural arrogance I think it's time we turn that around just as a question of social justice and also to realize you can wear fur and enjoy it